Welcome once again to United Prison Ministry, Changing Lives on the Inside. I'm so happy you allowed me to come into your living room or your church or wherever you may be where this program is being shown. And I understand now it is literally going around the world. Sister Low Miller, thank you once again for being here with that smiling face to, and to share with us what's going on in the prison world so, since you retired doing nothing. <laughs> I always love to enter into the homes of the dear people out there mm. because they write to me, they tell me how they appreciate the program and how much it is meant to them and how interested they are in learning about individuals who are incarcerated and what they, the public, can do to help. And it just thrills my heart to be here. You know, one thing our mail has really increased since you've been working, with, since you retired. I think, are you working harder now than you did before? <laughs> <laughs> You're absolutely right, Richard. I am working long hours, but I'll tell you what, I'm looking forward to the retirement benefits because I understand they're absolutely out of this world. Well, that's what I've been doing too, you know. There's nothing like a retirement plan out of this world out with Jesus world. Christ. You know that, don't you? You know, we have with us again Bill Gilliard, who I'm so happy more the day than it was before. He was with us about two or three years ago on the program because people know him as a think big man. But he's thinking big and bigger now because he's joining up with United Prison Ministry in a magnificent uh, situation where we're expanding the ministry not only in the prison but out of the prison. Welcome, Brother Bill. Welcome to the program. Well, it's a real pleasure to be with you, Dr. Bland. A <laughs> real pleasure. Now, you notice he said Dr. Bland. Now, the reason why he said that, my friend, is because in the United Prison Ministry, we give three degrees. And by the way, we give them all within two hours. The first degree is BA. That's born again. The next one is the MA, the master alter their life. And the third one is the PhD, that's praise him daily. So when you're with United Prison Ministers, you can get three degrees all within two hours of Bible class. And that's what we do because we give the men and women in prison the word of God. Bill, tell us what's going on now. What you been doing lately first? Bring us up to date. Well, you know, I, I'm so excited about being here, number one. Mm -hmm. But for the last couple of years, I've been working in Birmingham, Alabama. Mm -hmm. I've been working in the Birmingham public school system, mm -hmm. and uh, I've been going in the public school system taking the Word of God, mm -hmm. getting young people to learn to think big at a very early age. And this is exciting because you hear about all the, the violence that's happening across the nation, mm -hmm. and people are talking about the fact that prayer has been taken out of school mm -hmm. and the Ten Commandments have been taken out of school and you can't study the Word of God in, in the school system. But God has blessed me with a wonderful platform and that's the Think Big platform. And you know what, hold your point there, yes. Bill. By them taking the Word of God out of the home, they didn't take it out of the home, but the home has stopped using it, you know, parents working a shift, the mother works a shift, the father works a shift, and his children are having sh home shifting for themselves. That's why they were filling up the warden's prison. <laughs> See what I mean? Mm -hmm. But, you know, and you've been there now to help prevent that. But before you go in to tell me a little bit about what you've been doing, I have heard, and I personally know, that you've had some think big people on your program. This doctor, what's his name? Dr. Ben Carson. Dr. Ben Carson. That's right. That's right. Tell us a little bit because maybe some of these people don't happen to know him. Okay, well, Dr. Ben Carson is my mentor. Mm -hmm. I was um, working at Tuskegee University back in the early 90s mm -hmm. when he came to speak at an awards program. And of course, I attended the program. Right at the end of the program, he gave an acronym called Think Big because he said many people ask him what's the secret to his success. Mm -hmm. And God gave this to him to be able to share his message with many other people. Mm -hmm. He said, simply think big. Well, when I left that presentation uh, that day, I knew that God had spoken to me. And I've been carrying the think big message across the state of Alabama ever since. And Dr. Ben Carson, as you know, is the head of the Department of Pediatric Neurosurgery at Johns Hopkins University. The reason why he's a person to be respected is that for years he actually made straight F's in school. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. He actually grew up in the public housing communities of Detroit, 
lived in a single parent home, and he had a pathological temper, had anger built up inside of him, and he would fight at the drop of a hat. They tell me he was so dumb that when he would write his name on the paper, he would even spell his own name wrong. Exactly. <laughs> now, that's, now that's dumb, isn't oh, that's it? That's dumb. <laughs> well, he had a reputation. Yeah. He was called the class dummy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he lived up to it over and over again. But God is in the business of changing people. Oh, yeah. He had a mother that loved the Lord, a mother with a third grade education. Mm -hmm. And the mother believed in prayer. And so uh, his mother prayed and asked God simply, what shall I do with my boys? What can I do mm -hmm. so that my boys would not stay in the cycle that they're in? Mm -hmm. And God told her to take the boys off of television. That's right. This is long before the scientists, the social scientists studied and discovered that the kids were taking in too much television. God had spoken to a young lady with a third grade education mm -hmm. and told her, take the boys off of television. She did. As a matter of fact, as a result of taking them off of television, he said, now send them to the library on a regular basis. And mm -hmm. so she replaced television with the library and she required them to do two book reports every week. Mm -hmm. The boys thought that they were going to die mm -hmm. because they had been watching three to four hours of television every day mm -hmm. and they did not see how they could live without television. But you know, kids were designed by God to adjust That's and right. they adjust to anything, good or bad. Mm -hmm. Those boys made their adjustment and became great readers. As a result, he moved Ben Carson moved from the bottom of his class to the top of his class in 18 months. Could I do that for my grandchildren? Uh -huh. Could I take them off television and get them to go to the library? Sure, if you do it, Miss Carson, the way she did, because see, the thing about it is this. She's from the old school. If they didn't obey, they had to get, do something. And I'm t See, they thought their mother was smart. But they didn't know she couldn't read either. In <laughs> fact, right, in fact right. I know that's a person, right. and she just finished. She just finished and got her degrees just a few years ago. Anyway, exactly. but anyway, but the thing about it this is that one thing that um, Ben had, and that was respect for the parents. Mm -hmm. And this is what I found a little children, a lot of children don't have, and you have instilled that in them in the Think Big program. Yes, this is one of the things that has to be taught at a very early age. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, one of the things that I uh, do is I actually go to the Head Start program. My youngest program is the Head Start program where I work with kids that are three, four, and five mm -hmm. year old. Mm -hmm. And um, because the Think Big message works even that early. As a matter of fact, I also work with parents who are, well, I should say, with ladies who are carrying the babies. Mm -hmm. Because in the prenatal stage, the Think Big program also works. Because what we've discovered and uh, studies have shown is that if mothers would begin reading to the children during the prenatal stage, the children will develop a a love for reading. What we have to do is give them a choice. That. Right. Now that's we ha it. we have a prison in California where we give them a choice. Shirley, tell them about this yes. prison. Yes, I want to tell you about a video that mm -hmm. we have to offer. Change by choice, yes. not chance. And as you will receive this video when you request it from us at UPMI PO Box 8, Verbena, Alabama, you will see excerpts of this now from a clip that we have that will show you how people incarcerated in this one particular prison. Maranatha in California have changed their lives by choice. They had a choice and they made the right choice and now they're following Christ in making wise decisions. So let's look at this video and find out what happens in a life to make it want to change by choice. The Victor Valley Medium Community Correctional Facility is a private facility in Adelanto, California, about 120 miles northeast of Los Angeles. According to staff members and the gentlemen living there, it is truly unique. Not negative, like some institutions can be. Every time I got out before, the guards would, uh, in r and they'd say, well, we'll see you on your next violation, because they knew that uh, they, they had a stereotype that we would come back. And they said, well, we'll see you next time. How is it at Maranatha? When I came here, I had different vibes. I mean, it's like I felt something. There's no uh, facility around like this facility. Um, 
is very positive. I've been in and out of prison for the last 19, 18 years, about 12, 13 times, countless times. And um, this place here is completely different to any other institution I've ever been in. I've been in these institutions in and out of them for 19 years and nothing, I have never seen nothing like it. And believe me, I've been through quite a few of them. We have a hopeful environment here uh, as opposed to a uh, warehousing. This one is the one that gives them a new start. Generally speaking, when they walk out, they walk out as an underling, you know, somebody who is despised, somebody who is looked down upon. They walk out of here feeling like they know something that 98% of the population doesn't know, yes. and they can be a help to their families and to people. And that's the type of attitude, you know, that we need to, to foster with these people to recognize their worth. Why do the men leave with self-respect? It's the way Maranatha treats them. Address the inmates as Mr. Uh, how to communicate with the inmates. So because the inmate staff relations here is, is a very, very keen and a very, very important factor. It's all about respect. But if you never treat anybody with respect first, you'll never get respect back. They treat you with the utmost respect, and in, they, they expect the same respect. In Chuckawalla, there's a lot of pressure there. There's people there that want to gangbang and do the same thing about cliques and, and all this stuff. But, you know, here I've received a little more friendship concerning the staff members. They call you sir and mister instead of inmate. They talk to you with respect. They don't come at you crazy and tell you, get down or do this and do that. It was incredible. People called us Mr. here. Well, when I arrived here, the first three words out of somebody's mouth to me, an officer, was please, thank you, and another thank you. That kind of, uh, it blew my mind. Guards here are real human beings here. They treat you with respect. When we first got it, they greeted us with a lot of respect that you don't get up. At, I have never got other, any other prison. Uh, I haven't met anybody here that was not worth giving an opportunity to. Um, the staff are willing to go out of their way 100% to help you. I think in other prisons they perpetuate violence with uh, separation and different things, you know, but here we, we go to church together, you know, we do, we, we just praise the Lord together and uh, I feel like they're all my brothers. It made me look at things different. This thing called the line in the yard, you yeah. know, where they have the blacks, the whites, yeah. the gang members, all this, and nobody crosses over the line. Nobody says anything out of line, out of character of what is expected of them. You know, the people that run the yard. Mm -hmm. In the program side, there is no line. That's right. You've got yeah, blacks, whites, gang members, everybody playing basketball together, that's doing right. things together. There's no line, nobody controlling the yard. You go right across the prison to the other side, and it's the same line that you would see in any prison. The two distinct programs in the same facility is what makes Maranatha different. When men arrive, they attend an orientation where both programs are clearly explained. The standard California Department of Corrections, CDC, program on side two, and the New Start program, or side one, complete with daily Bible study classes, job training, anger management classes, and a vegan vegetarian diet complete with a salad bar. After the chaplain speaks to you, explains a little bit more about the program, you're gonna have that choice to make for yourself. Then they choose which side they want and set their goal. Everybody here is trying to reach the same goal. If you don't want that goal, we can move you over to unit two. It's your choice. Uh, this program here works, uh, but it takes a person to commit to that choice. You know, that video that we just looked at, part of it, that the warden that you mentioned there, is changed by choice. Uh, that video, I'm sure that many people like to have it, and don't forget, it is free. Just contact us at the address that was on your screen. And that's what Bill Gilliard is doing, being given by choice. Now, there's a book that he mentioned, something about Dr. Carson, and of course, Dr. Carson has endorsed that book. Uh, the name of it is Desire of Ages, and already, I believe we distributed about a million and a half of them already, and people are still asking for it, so your support is still continually needed. Bill, now, how are you giving the youth in the community a choice? Well, I'm giving them a choice, number one, by participating in our Think Big sessions in the schools mm -hmm. as well as in, in the community. And of course, I'm teaching them every opportunity that I get that they have a choice. 
You know, just mm -hmm. understanding that makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. You'd be surprised to know the number of kids, even adults, who honestly think that the circumstances in their lives have limited their choice to only one thing. Mm -hmm. But they need to know that they do have more than one choice, and that choice being the wrong choice. Mm -hmm. They need to know that they have a choice to get up in the morning and pray. That's right. They need to know that they have a choice to get up in the morning and study the Word of God. Mm -hmm. They need to know that they have a choice to make right decisions regardless of whether it's a popular decision or, mm -hmm. or a decision where uh, the crowd mm -hmm. is in the majority. And they need to understand that they have a choice to think big every day while others are thinking small. And you know, it's interesting, Bill. those four charts you mentioned already are free. Everybody can make those choices. Exactly. I mean, even those in prison can make those choices. That's right, exactly. See what I mean? That's so right. it's not something that they say, well, I can't afford it. You know what I mean? Yes. You can make those choices. Yes. Because those are all done within yourself, by yourself. Yes. And that, 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 there's one other choice that I want to mention. They, they need to know that they have the choice to be in the family of God. That's right. You see, they don't have a choice when it comes to what family they are born into on this earth. Mm -hmm. But I want kids to know, even in a public school setting, that you've got a choice to be in the family of God. So that's where the word big come from? That's where it comes from, as a matter of fact. Okay, what does it Believe stand for? Believe in God. All right. That's what it's all about. <laughs> and, and the thing about it, um, Dr. Bland, is the, is the fact that the kids get excited about the Think Big program because we come in with music, mm -hmm. with rap, and excitement in our program mm -hmm. where we have fun in the assembly mm -hmm. and uh, at the same time we teach the basics mm -hmm. the basics which is the word of god the t is for thankfulness the h is for honest the i is for initiate the n is for noun the k is for knowledge the b is for books and of course the bible the mm -hmm. the second i is for improvement and the g is for good great and god we have a great time teaching these basics in a public school setting and no one has has any problems with it. You know, when you said <laughs> that, I thought about what a prisoner even told me. He said, you know what, he said, Brother Bland, you know what B-I-B-L-E stands for? I said, well, I don't know. He said it stands for basic information before leaving earth. Go on. That's the Bible. Had you Go heard on. that before? I hadn't heard that one before. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is good. Isn't that, isn't like that the that. truth? Basic information, information. before leaving earth. <laughs> and don't be one. You say you work on your retirement plan, didn't you? That's right. And I need to <laughs> keep up with my Bible where I'll have all that basic all right, information. Then. Yes, yes. All right, then, Bill, keep on sharing what's going on now. Well, actually, um, I'm involved with uh, taking the Think Big concept into prisons. I'm working with the United Prison Ministry and the National Now, and I'm excited about that. Mm -hmm. You know, We're excited I, too. I, I said that Dr. Ben Carson is my mentor, <laughs> but my other mentor <laughs> is Richard Bland. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you and I have been knowing each yeah. other for a number of years. Oh, yes. Long before you went into the prison ministry, I knew you in the real That's estate right. business That's when right. I was a student at Oakwood College. 20, you know, it's been 26 years or 27 years. It's been a long time now, yeah. I'm telling you. And, yeah. and of course, when I met you then, I knew that you had characteristics that I was interested in emulating. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wanted to follow you. And I just came by your office, and that started our relationship. Yeah. And here yeah. we are some 20-some years later where I'm actually on your team. Glad to be on your team. But I'm so happy now that, you know, I'll be honest with you, I enjoyed real estate. Mm -hmm. uh, but nothing like this, nothing like this. I know what you mean. Because, I mean, yes, I enjoy, and the reason why I enjoy real estate, I enjoy seeing people who were not in homes to get in homes, you know what I mean? Right. And uh, I believe that the time is still due that when they had a home, people couldn't separate so fast because who's going to take the part of the house? But by the time they had to figure out how they're going to do at the house, they got back together. Well, see, see you were in the housing business right. then, and you're in the new housing business now. I'm, once the bigger I'm, mansion oh, business. Oh, yeah, That's now right. I tied right. them up for the rest of their life. You That's know, right. I, now not only this life, out of this world, really. That's right. Because once they have the Word of God, and once we point them to that, that can't be moved. Now, yeah. eventually, on this earth, they could sell those houses, and that's why eventually some of them divorced and went away. Mm -hmm. But now, if I hook them to Jesus, mm -hmm. and both of them stay to Jesus, yes. they're going to be hooked. Yes. They'll be in that mansion. That's, they're yes. in that mansion. Yes. So go ahead on. The reason why I'm really excited about being with um, United Prison Ministries is because I'm getting a chance to work with young men who recognize that 
they made a mistake, or young women, yeah. because I'm also working with the Tutwiler Women's Prison in, in, in Wetumpka, Alabama. And of course, I'm working with people who recognize that they made a mistake, mm -hmm. and they are thankful for another chance. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, um, numerous programs are coming into the prisons, but for some reason or another, they want to bite into something that they can live with once they get out. And so one of the things that I've offered them to do is become a Think Big Ambassador. That's right. We want them to understand that God wants to use them behind the prison walls. Mm -hmm. And if they would start being an ambassador where they are, you know, God will open the Red Sea you for bet. His people. Yeah. God will open those doors mm -hmm. for people that maybe uh, under normal circumstances wouldn't get out for 10 years, God will... Or never get out. Or never get out in some in cases. In fact, the other night, the woman was with us the other night, I understand she's got That's three a life good example. Two or three life terms. That's know. right. Yeah. That's a good example. And so what we're doing is we're offering the people that we're talking to uh, at Draper Prison, mm -hmm. in Staten Prison, mm -hmm. Tutwiler, the opportunity of becoming Think Big Ambassadors. But you, let me tell you what I want and plan on doing. I didn't tell you this before. Once we, you work with those, I want to videotape that to send it to the hundreds of other prisons that we are now are entering in with our Bible lesson. Exactly. See, because you can't be everywhere. Exactly. But the Word of God can be everywhere with that little thing big. With that big. videotape. And That's the reason right. I'm saying it's very important, you know, it's also, as we walked through Tutwiler that one day, Warden Davis uh, said, you know, I want you to go into the HIV unit. Mm -hmm. Now, as I understand, and you correct me, are uh, groups going in there ministering to them in the past? How's that been working? I mean, because well, there were some volunteers who would go in, but a lot of the people do not go in because they are hesitant to because of the uh, feeling that they have about the infection of HIV. But mm. uh, that is in the dark ages now. Mm -hmm. You just don't get HIV from breathing the same air the individuals do. So they don't have a lot of people who volunteer to go in there and minister. But ever didn't, he, you know, I got the feeling that I didn't, because when I walked back there, he said, I want you to go here. And those women said, oh, yes, please, as if nobody's going there. You know, just like basically nobody goes on death row. You know, we're going, I go on death row. Well, they certainly <laughs> don't have a lot of people who are willing to come in. In. Oh, that's what and it to is. minister yeah. to their needs because people again are hesitant. They fear for their own health. But that is, is certainly not something that they need to fear for because the conditions are certainly such that they will not be infected by HIV simply by talking with these individuals. Well, Bill is specialized going there four, what, four times a month? Four times per month. Four times a and month. We've gotten off to an excellent oh, start. Yes. Let well, me go, tell go you. Go ahead on. Tell about more things. We're going we're yeah. gonna to have to. <laughs> Come on, Bill. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm excited time about time that too. particular group. As a matter yeah. of fact, what happened to me the very first time that I had my session with them is that I was blessed more than the ladies. Ha have you discovered? Isn't that always the yes. case? Isn't yeah. that always the yeah. case? Yeah, I came to bring tell, them. Look, tell our audience out there yeah. that Isn't what a blessing it is to yeah. go into prison and minister. There's absolutely no two ways about it. If you are depressed, if you are discouraged, if you are downhearted, if you are experiencing the D syndrome, just understand that that can change if you would simply begin giving. Remember that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him would not perish but have everlasting life. God Himself is a giver. Amen. If you are a ch child of God, mm -hmm. then because you are of God, you are going to become a giver. And what happens is that when you give, it opens up the windows of heaven so that God will begin to give to you. Life will change for you. And so I'm telling you that I went into the HIV unit to give to them. Mm -hmm. And they gave me so much until when I left, I felt more blessed than they were. <laughs> and that's precisely what would happen to you or anyone else who would get into this business of giving because Christ has given so much to us. And you know, Amen. if it excited you, yeah. it definitely excited because see, already you're exciting 
the youth, the kids. Yes. You also been in hospital. You also been in other prisons. That's but what right. I'm trying to say, if you get excited, it yes. must be, you know, it's just, <laughs> it's just like giving Bill Gates some money. He says, I'm happy because yeah. I got more. You know what I mean? Exactly, <laughs> you know? exactly. I didn't understand where you were going with that. Yeah. But now that's a good example. You know what I mean? That's right. Yeah. I was already Yeah, excited. already. I already had a whole I lot. I already had so much going for me because I was mm -hmm. going in the elementary, yeah. the junior high, in the yeah. high schools. Yeah. But I got something extra when I went to the HIV unit and I'm telling you I was blessed I left blessed Amen. yes and let me tell you something else you know the majority most of the people that are part of the ministry don't go in there because they are supporters of it but letters after letter I had people say you know I never been so blessed yes by giving to the ministry than ever before. Yes. I remember once uh, a couple, I can see the letter now and I can't remember the name. And I, if I did, I probably shouldn't say it anyway. Mm -hmm. They said they were on the way home and they looked at, I uh, had the cassette tape mm -hmm. and they heard about what's going on in the prison and they retired. Mm -hmm. They went home, looked in their savings account, had $6,000, do you know they sent it all to the ministry? Mm -hmm. That's similar to the letter that I received recently from the lady, and she just scratched a little note on a piece of paper and said, would appreciate hearing from you if you get the chance. And yeah. so when we got the mail, yeah. I yes. called her up because she had put her telephone number in there. Yes. And that lady cried so on the telephone when I told her how much we appreciated yeah. her interest, her prayers, and her financial support. And she cried and she thanked me. She says, you just don't know how much it means for you to call me and thank me for this. She says, I've wanted to do it for so long and I haven't had the, the funds to do it. And now then I've been able to get together this money and send you. And she was just so blessed to be a giver. Yes. And that's what you were talking about, yes, Bill, exactly being a I'm giver. It is genuinely blessing to be giving. Yes. And believe me, it, the Lord's, People are doing it so God can see it. We, we understand that. And God is going to bless. You know our time is running out. So, Bill, you've got to be on next week. Well, we've like got to continue this because we've got to let them know what not only you're doing for in the prison, not only what you're doing, but what you're going to be doing for the youth Amen. and other people who want Christian education. Amen. Because I want them to know about that so they can get involved. I look forward to coming oh, back next the, week. You're going to be back next week. And not only next week, week after then and week after <laughs> then and week after then and week after then, because we have to share the word of God, what's going on here. My good friends, I want to thank you once again for being with us. Uh, this evening, if it's sometime, it maybe three o'clock in the morning. And of course, you know we've been showing around the world now, so I don't know what time it is where you are, but wherever you are, I want to say may God bless you and thank you so much for being a part of this ministry, changing lives on the inside. Remember, it could not happen without you. May God bless each and every one of you.